All right, guys. Welcome to another episode of Van Build Tech Talk with Kurt. I'm Kurt, <laughs> and today we're going to be talking about plumbing. So I appreciate you all joining into this. I will tell you that I'm uniquely qualified to talk about this topic. You know, right when I was coming out of high school, one of my first jobs was as a plumber's assistant. And I'll never forget the first thing that my boss told me. He said, he said three things. He said, Kurt, you, once, you, once you know these three things, you'll know everything you need to know about plumbing. He said, number one, crap always flows downhill. Number two, the boss is always right, Number three, the paychecks on Friday. So I guess that makes me uh, qualified to talk about this. That's apparently that's all I needed to know about plumbing. And uh, but I did learn a lot through that experience. And you know, through this van build process, I'm not sure if you guys are aware, but uh, we self converted a 2018 Sprinter van into a tiny home on wheels, and we are embarking on a journey. Uh, around the world and when I say we I'm traveling with uh, my significant other snow and our two van kitties G money and Vanna and so um, so I wanted to talk to you about the plumbing uh, and here's here's kind of where I come from with these tech talk videos I'm not trying to convince you to build our van or show you how we built our van I'm um, certainly um, showing you what we did will be part of it. Um, but more importantly, when I started converting the van, I really didn't know anything about converting a van. So I had to, you know, I had to learn all that stuff and, you know, search the Google and search the YouTube and all the other things that I'm sure you guys have, have done and are doing. And so I just wanted to kind of maybe bridge the gap, uh, help bridge the gap and put some information out there that I think was valuable that would have helped me out a bunch um, and save me a lot of time and research and so that's the that's the main emphasis for this video so whether you're trying to convert a van or a schoolie or a tiny home or anything like that I think this plumbing topic will be beneficial to you provided that you're gonna have plumbing in the van I know not all vans um, have that and then some have varying uh, levels of technical uh, difficulty in their in their plumbing builds and so but I think we have something for everyone in this and so uh, but yeah I just want to say thanks again for joining we really appreciate you guys not only watching and liking our videos but also the comments have been amazing um, I can tell you that we have a ton of stuff going on and before we jump into the content I just wanted to share with you a little bit about that um, number one I don't know if you guys are aware of this but we have a travel series and basically the travel series we bring you along so we've been in the van for four months and we've traveled from Orlando basically to the West Coast and we bring you along and show you some of the best and coolest things that we see along the journey with us and uh, you know you kind of get the good and the bad or whatever but um, it's a really good travel series I encourage you to watch that currently we're in our fa farewell USA tour so that's our travels across the US Soon we're going to be breaking into Mexico, and so that'll be a new uh, series. And then obviously uh, we'll start a new series as we go to different countries as we travel around the world. We encourage you to join the travel series. And then I think I also mentioned that we've been in the band for, van for, um, for four months. And so we just released a uh, Van Life series video on four months in a van, Lessons Learned. So that's a super cool video for anybody who's thinking about living in a van or anything like that uh, full time um, there's a lot of things that we've learned along the way and we share share that with you in that video and then finally the reason why you guys are here is the tech talk series and uh, this is episode six of the tech talk series and so as you see this list you'll see we've already released uh, five videos and we've uh, we've penciled in some new topics to talk about and so that's in part thanks to your comments um, some of you have asked for more uh, details on the maintenance to the recirculating shower and some other topics so by all means hit the notification turn the notifications on so you can be notified as we're releasing new content right now we don't have a schedule so kind of when we get the videos ready we release them so the best way to know is to turn your notifications on and also uh you know don't forget to click the like button but more importantly more importantly guys 
hit us up in the comments. If you have any questions or there's any other topics that you'd like for us to talk on, um, yeah, hit us in the comments. We work hard to uh, answer all your comments. We enjoy reading those and also respond to those. So those are, those are great. So please uh, don't hesitate to reach out to us in the comment sections. And that said, let's move forward to the content. When I think about plumbing, I think about really kind of break it down into two categories. And number one would be the kitchen and number two is the bathroom. Number two, bathroom. No, no pun intended, really. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, the kitchen, the kitchen, I consider the sink in the, in, in the kitchen. And um, that is where we do all our cooking, all our prepping, and that type of stuff. But it's also where we brush our teeth and do a washing up at night or in the morning and things like that. So it, it kind of is a dual purpose uh, kitchen slash bathroom sink. But for the discussion, um, this is the kitchen. Um, and then the bathroom would be the recirculating shower and the composting toilet. But first, let's talk, let's talk a little bit more in detail about the kitchen. So by now I've already showed you kind of the finished look of the kitchen, what it looks like. And, um, you know, so you can see kind of on the surface what it looks like. But for this tech talk, what I want to do is kind of get under, you know, under the van, under the, under the curtain and show you um, how this thing works. And so this diagram, if you see right here, is laid out. Um, now, I should mention that our, most of our plumbing, the majority of our plumbing is under chassis. So our tanks, our freshwater tank and our gray water tank and most of our plumbing are under chassis. Primarily the only things that aren't under chassis are the things that come up through to connect to our fixtures and stuff. So most of this is under chassis. So we start with a 27 gallon freshwater tank and that tank is located under the van, actually right under where I'm sitting behind the driver's seat. Um, uh, for those of you who have the sprinters, when you open the door, the gas tanks right there, if you look under the chassis, it kind of sits right behind that, uh, right between the fuel tank. And I'll show you a video clip of where that is, but it's a long skinny tank. And uh, yeah, it's 27 gallons. My gray water tank sits just behind um, that. Again, still on the driver's side, but just, just behind. Um, the fresh water tank and that's a 15 gallon uh, gray water tank but uh, looking at this graph right here as you can see when the water when the water line comes out of my fresh water tank we go right into the sure flow pre-pump filter and that that is really not to do anything more than just keep any sediment or big chunks from getting into the pump that's really there to protect the pump and so that's a pretty important piece right there. The next thing I have a sure flow pump after the plump, the pump, and this is kind of a T and there's different ways you can plumb this, but I have mine teed off and then I have the, um, the sure flow accumulator tank and that's a pressurized tank. And what that does that keeps your, um, uh, it, it, it stabilizes the pressure in your system so that your pump doesn't continue to cycle on and off. And so I found that to be beneficial. Um, so I would encourage you, uh, it doesn't have to be sure flow uh, for my, <laughs> there's my buddy, G. Um, it doesn't have to be a sure flow pump by any means. I'm not necessarily endorsing those. Uh, for my recirculating shower, I actually have a C flow pump. And so I'm sure um, other companies make the accumulators and things like that. It's just what I happen to have. Um, from the pump, I pump the water into a filtration system. So I have a, uh, and for those of you who've seen the recycling or uh, recirculating shower video, I use the same, um, the, the short, basically house uh, blue, big blue filters. And I use the short fat ones rather than the skinny long ones. And again, that's for clearance and space issues under chassis. But I have three of those cartridge filters and the first one of those is filled with a uh, 20 micron sediment filter. The second one is a five micron sediment filter. And the third one is a one micron carbon filter. Now you might be thinking if I'm putting fresh water in here, why do I even need a sediment filter or anything like that? 
when we built this, we uh, we weren't sure as we're going to be traveling around the country what kind of water we're going to be pumping into the tank. Certainly, right now we've been able to uh, put uh, completely fresh water in there, and we hope that's kind of the path moving forward. But we're not sure as we get into other countries what that's going to be like, and that's the reason why we have the sediment filters. If in your build you're only going to be putting fresh water in, it probably makes sense still to have some kind of filtration system, you know, on your van. I know a lot of houses have filtration systems, even whether they have city water or, you know, well water, especially if you have well water, but a lot of them have some sort of filtration system. And I think, uh, I think it just makes sense, especially when you're getting water from different sources and you don't necessarily kind of know the quality of that water. At least it made sense to us. So um, we do have that and then we go right into a UV um, light filter. And so it just gives me a level of comfort to know that our water is filtered and it also goes through a UV light. After it comes out of the UV light, it goes into a heat exchanger. Um, I'm going to do another uh, tech talk specifically on the, uh, the hydronic heating system I have. That's going to heat our water and our air. Um, I've talked a little bit about it in the recirculating shower video. I'll talk a little bit about it here. I'm, I don't have time in this video to go into detail, but basically it's a small diesel heater that heats a glycol fluid. That glycol circulates through the system, circulates through the heat exchanger. The water uh, doesn't make contact with the glycol, but inside of the heat exchanger, it makes contact with the plates that are heated by uh, the glycol. And, and that's how the water's heated. So as you can see here in this video, once the water comes out of the UV light filter, I have a T right there. And it either goes through the heat exchanger or go, it goes right up into my sink diverter um, as cold water. And so uh, if I turn the hot water on, obviously it's gonna open that, that hot water line. That water's gonna come through that heat exchanger and provided that my hot water heater's on, it's gonna basically be like an on-demand hot water heater and heat that water. Uh, now what I will say is that we do not run our, uh, our heater 24 seven. And so we primarily turn that on when we're showering uh, so if we're showering then we have hot water now if we need hot water for anything else we can certainly kick the heater on it does take about 10 minutes for the heater to fire up and get that heat exchanger good and hot once that heat exchanger is good and hot then you have basically unlimited um, you know our on demand I shouldn't say unlimited because nothing in the van is unlimited but um, you have on-demand hot water and so uh, and so that's basically how that works from once the water comes through the sink it goes uh, down the drain obviously we do have a trap there it's a, 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 a camco or something like that it's not a P trap um, we'll put a link in the description in terms of exactly what that trap is but the water then goes through the um, floor of the van and uh, it elbows across and goes into the gray tank. Now, what I should say about the gray water tank is that uh, it's very important that you have a trap between your gray water tank and your drain. And it's also very important that you have a vent and the reason is, is you don't want the gases from the gray water tank to come back up through your drain and into your van. So you don't want those smells and those gases coming in. And so the trap helps to prevent that. And then, you know, as water goes into your tank, there's obviously air and that, that stuff is in there. So as the water starts to fill that, that, stu that, that gas needs to be displaced. And so by venting the tank, you give, you know, that stuff a place to go and so uh, if you don't vent it then it has no choice but to come back up to your drain and make your van smell so those are two things that's really important and you really uh, want to make sure you do now I will say this about my about my kitchen setup um, that it is under chassis I do not have any of my lines heated my tanks are insulated However, with my, um, my hydronic 
heating system. I have glycol circulating next to my lines. My long-term plan is to tie those, uh, is, is to use that heat, that glycol, to heat the lines and to heat the tanks when I'm in freezing situations. And so I'm from Florida and I don't plan on being in any uh, freezing situations until probably, it's probably gonna be at least a year before we get into those circumstances. Um, but I will be winter proofing in the near, near future, but I do get a lot of questions about that. I have not winter proofed it completely but I have planned for it and I have some ideas. So when I do that, I'll certainly put together a video and show you guys um, exactly what I did for that. Uh, but that basically, but that basically uh, completes what our system looks like. Um, it is a bit of a complex system. You know, I, I've seen uh, the systems uh, basically where they have a jerry can uh, type situation where you have a fresh water and a uh, a gray water that's right under the sink. Those are super easy and very functional. Um, we want a little bit more storage storage capacity and a little bit less fiddling. But by all means, I've seen some vans where people are very happy with those and I absolutely get it. Um, I see some people using a hand pump with those systems or a foot pump. I also see some people uh, using like a SureFlow or some other form of pump so they have running water. Um, you know, so it's all just a matter of personal choice on that. What I would say is that from an electric standpoint, I do have uh, my pumps on an on off toggle switch. And I think that's important, you know, when you go to bed at night or when you leave the van or whatever, I think it's a good idea to turn those off because you know, if for some reason you do spring a leak, you, know, you could potentially, you know, pump all your water out of your tanks or even worse, you could fill your van full of those water. So it's a good best practice to have a toggle switch where you can turn um, those systems on and off when, when uh, you're not using them or, or what have you. Now, uh, for 30 gallons or 27 gallons, we, you know, a lot of times we say 30 gallons of water just to make it easy for conversational purposes, but I'll try to keep it try to keep it at 27 gallons because that's what we have but uh, you know that lasts us depending on you know what we're doing and uh, that generally lasts us three to five days um, I'm not sure if we've ever had it last a full week um, so three to five days uh, generally our gray water tank lasts about that long as well um, I would say our gray water tank is more probably like three or four days um, and so again, it all depends on how much we use the toilet in the van and how much we do some other things. And that would depend on you as well. I mean, obviously, you know, if we're drinking water out of the tap and cooking out of the tap and we're using outside facilities, that water's not going to the gray water tank. And so that's kind of what our, our fill dump fill schedule is. And, uh, and so now we're going to go into the, the bathroom. So if you look here, so I guess I should start by saying that, uh, you know, I released a pretty in-depth uh, video on the recirculating shower. So I'll just briefly touch on that. But if you haven't seen that video, we'll put the, we'll put the link in it. And you definitely want to check that video out if you're interested in a recirculating shower. But basically what that means is, when we turn the shower water on, it comes out and, you know, we, we have a hot water system or whatever. And the on-demand hot water here that I just explained. Uh, when the water goes down into the drain, as it comes out, it goes through a series of filters, including a UV light filter, and it gets pumped right back out of the shower head. And so we have a 10-gallon tank on that, and but that allows for us to take, you know, 30 minute, one hour showers, and, uh, and it's just great. I mean, it, it gives us a chance to take full showers. We don't have to take Navy showers. Now, uh, what I will say is we do change that water out. Uh, so whenever we you know, dump our gray water tank uh, and, and fill our fresh water, we also dump our shower and fill our fresh water. And there's other maintenance involved in that. But if you're interested in the recycling shower, by all means, check out the video. And but what I will say is we do have some plumbing in the composting toilet that I haven't talked about 
and so I'll talk about that here. I want to kind of show you what's going on behind the scenes. And so the image here on the left is really kind of, you know, with the toilet seat on. So once we peel the toilet seat back, you can see um, that we have uh, number one and number two. And basically, the two is for, for the poo. <laughs> two is for the poo, and that's, and, and that's basically a honey bucket or whatever. And then number one is a urine diverter. So, so um, your pee would go in number one. So you kind of sit on the lid there and you can kind of see how that works. If you haven't seen those um, in other videos or unfamiliar with them. Uh, for guys, it's pretty easy. For girls, I think it takes a little bit of practice, a lot less than learning how to ride a bike, a little bit more than breathing. So um, if you need more details on that, we'll have to have a special guest. We'll have to have Snow come in and do... Uh, be make a guest appearance on the tech tech talk but uh it's it's really simple guys and but the plumbing that we have associated with the toilet is uh and there's really kind of two options with this um your pee can go into a sort of a one gallon container you know and then when that as that fills up you just lift the lid up and take the container out and then you can dump that and so that would be sort of a self-contained gray water tank but what we have is we have that actually plumbed to our gray water tank and it goes into the same gray water tank that we use for our kitchen and uh, basically it's a half inch line that comes from the urine diverter goes through the floor of the van we have a trap installed in that and again I can't stress enough the importance of having that vent on that gray water tank so as the liquid fills it up the gas has a place to go uh, underneath the van rather than in the van and so the, the plumbing on the on the, the composting toilet is really simple um, in terms of, of you know the rest of how that thing works we'll do a tech talk video on you know how that works what kind of composting toilet we have how to clean it how to maintain it and all that stuff on another video but I did want to to um to get that in on the plumbing and so that really does it for the plumbing aspect of our van um, again i think we probably have a fairly complex system uh, build compared to most and so hopefully you were able to glean some nuggets maybe that were um, useful to you i may have left some details out in terms of you know how i drill through the floor or how we seal that up and all that other stuff so if you have those questions leave them in the comments but anyway, that's our system, and that's our Tech Talk for today. Um, we have some other topics coming up, so again, don't forget to hit that notification button. We've got appliances and cooking coming up, which I've been working on that. It's almost done. Recirculating shower maintenance is almost done. We're going to have several videos coming out in the very near future, guys. So hit the notification button. Really appreciate the comments. Really appreciate you guys watching our videos. Thanks a lot, and we'll see you on the next one.